interrogations can go on for hours or even days. But in some rare cases, interrogations can last just seconds. From accidentally confessing to escapes, these are five of the fastest police interrogations in history. Starting with Raymond Gates demonstrating exactly how to head straight to prison in seconds. Raymond was brought in after police obtained footage of him assaulting a 17-year-old girl. Police had to prove that the girl never gave consent, which was difficult given that only some of the attack was caught on camera. But became a lot easier when Raymond almost instantly made a huge slip up in the interrogation that put him dead to rights. This girl came back to my house, she's telling me she wants to lose her virginity, man. They, like she's ready to do it and everything. And then right a couple seconds before and she's like, I, she's like, I don't know and stuff like that. She's telling me yes, everything's cool, she's cool with making out. But when she when she screamed, stop. Please don't do this. It hurts so much. I was already what, inside what? of her at that point. I mean, like the oh no, stop. I'm already like inside of her there, man. It's already like that's when she's like, oh, it hurts, which it hurts when a girl gets her virginity taken. And without even trying, the cops had everything they needed to convict him. So he was quickly found guilty and sentenced to nine years in prison. But while Raymond's interview ended in under 10 minutes, Quantrell Schwartzlow did it even faster, with his interrogation ending in just seconds. But not in the way you'd think. Quantrell was brought in for strangling a girl and assaulting her, a crime he clearly didn't want to be convicted of. Unfortunately for Quantrell, his handcuffs were a dead giveaway, and he was captured four hours later. While it's unknown exactly what happens to Quantrell after, this clip will forever put him in the Interrogation Hall of Fame. However, Ricky Hawthorne took a much more straightforward approach to ending his interrogation, managing to confess in record time. Ricky was found covered in blood near the bodies of Lara Kuchar and Tommy Skeens. Lara had clearly been assaulted. Ricky's DNA was also found at the scene, so police had no worries when bringing him in. Surprisingly though, Ricky would make it even easier for them. Hey, hey, come on in. Hey, yes sir. Yeah, I did. Oh, I did. You know what, let's do this. I did it, but I think somebody came behind me and finished it. Okay. Yeah, I did it. So much for staying silent. However, Ricky is alleging that he wasn't actually the murderer. He just attacked the couple and assaulted Laura. It was someone else that finished the job. Even though the evidence was stacked against him, he still would have had a better chance of getting away with it if he just stayed silent. There's three more people. I don't know. And you know what? They was living when I left. But I think somebody came in behind me and finished them off. I did beat the shit out of them. But it was somebody else. I, don't, I left. Despite his claims, it was determined that the couple died of the injuries inflicted by Ricky, and he was later found guilty of first and second degree murder, as well as battery in the assault on Laura. But Jared Murray takes the cake for the most insane interrogation in history. Jared had shot his friend in the head during a car ride to Walmart for no other reason than to know what it felt like to kill someone. Jared attempted to flee by hitchhiking to Canada, but was picked up by an officer after perfectly matching the perp's description. The officer took him into custody where a quick but truly chilling interview took place. Okay, and what do you remember telling me? Uh, in summation that I'm guilty, yes. Of what? Of murder. Okay, and who did you murder? Uh, Gennaro. Okay, and then how did you murder him? With a gun. I shot him in the head twice. Okay. Uh, three shots were fired, one missed. Jared isn't hanging around here, and apparently had already confessed before he even made it to the station. But what's interesting about this interrogation isn't the speed at which he confessed, it's exactly why, as well as his general demeanor throughout the interview. Okay. Jared, give me your full name. Jared Lindreth Wayne Murray. Okay, and what's your date of birth? Uh, July the 20th, 1994. And how'd you guys hook up? I went down to his dorm room and asked if I could be given a ride to Walmart in exchange for $20 gas money. Okay, 
And did he agree to that? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's a couple miles from the school? Uh, 1.7 miles, sir. 1.7 miles? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, so he took you to Walmart? Yes, sir. And did you both go in? No, we did not go in, sir. Okay, and why not? We pulled into the parking lot, then I pulled the uh, weapon on him and demanded that he take me to Asher, Oklahoma, sir. Okay, and why did all of a sudden did you decide that you need to go to Asher? because I was planning to take him out into the country and kill him. Jared lacks any form of empathy, remorse, or knowledge that what he's done is a bad thing. He merely expresses his actions as though they were fact, and in a later psychological assessment, it was determined this was because he had become delusional and believed that he was required to kill someone. If it's not clear by now, Jared was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, and delusions from this are likely what pushed him to kill Gennaro. But Jared is happy to provide us with even more detail surrounding his motive. Okay. So you've been, you've been planning this for two days. Uh, two weeks, yes. Two weeks. But not with a selected individual, no. Okay. And when did you get to the point where you knew it was going to be him? That was three days prior to the incident. And why him? Uh, all the kids in college here, why, why him? I believed that he would have had the least impact, sir. Impact of on what? Uh, I believed he didn't have many friends, or many close friends, I should rephrase. And as his... <clears throat> as he is going missing, his absence would be less notable. Jared was, of course, charged with first-degree murder, but was eventually found not guilty by reason of insanity. Instead of receiving prison time, he would instead spend an indefinite amount of time in custody at a mental health facility where he would receive the treatment he should have had so much earlier. All three of these cases have been about criminals who confessed quickly, but there are many cases where the interrogation is almost instant, but for a very different reason. This 18-year-old suspect was brought in after allegedly hitting a cop with his car and was subsequently read his Miranda rights. Yeah, it is a criminal investigation. Obviously, you're not free to go because you have warrants for your arrest. Um, we read your Miranda because it's very important you understand your rights. Okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say you can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand each of these rights I've explained to you? Yes, sir. Have these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me now? No, sir. I'm sorry? Say what, what is it? Have these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me now? No, sir. No, sir. You don't want to talk to me? I just call my mom. Okay, you can call your mom at the jail. Right. At just 18 years old, this guy showed exactly how to act in a police interrogation, perfectly exercising his rights and truly outsmarting detectives, assuming he wanted to land himself in prison for the rest of his life.